Hi everybody, let's talk about how muscles contract. We need to review some terminology to do this. And muscles are kind of complicated because there's bunches of bunches of bunches and each of the bunches has a different name. So we gotta get on board with the naming here before we go any further. So when we take a skeletal muscle and we look at it, we can see that these, these big bunches right here are called fascicles. Okay, and each fascicle, if we blow up a fascicle, we can see that a fascicle is just a bunch of something else. And the fascicle is actually a bunch of cells. So each one of these right here is called a muscle fiber, which is another word for a muscle cell or a myocyte. Okay, so it doesn't look like what we think about when we think about a cell, which is like a little round thing with organ, a bunch of organelles floating around in it. Well, this is just a modified cell. A muscle fiber is just a modified cell. And it has a couple of things that make it distinctive. One of those things is that it's multinucleate. It has more than one nucleus. So most cells just have the one nucleus. Um, if we look down here, this is a myofibril close-up. We can see that these, these things right here that I'm pointing to, these are actually nuclei. It needs more nuclei because there's a whole bunch of things going on here. And the nucleus, of course, is responsible for encoding all of these um, different proteins that are needing to be made and so forth. So there's multiple nuclei in each uh, muscle fiber. It's also, instead of calling this the plasma membrane surrounding this cell, we call it the sarcolemma. <laughs> just, just to confuse you a little bit more. And it has a couple of specialized organelles as well. So remember, organelles are things like the nucleus, the Golgi apparatus, the lysosomes, and so forth. Well, we have a mitochondria, which we've got demonstrated here. We also have an organelle in these muscle cells, which is called the myofibril. And as you can see, each of these little dark um, circles surrounded by dark black. Each of those is, is a myofibril. So there are a whole bunch of them in a single muscle cell, tens of thousands of these um, myofibrils. And now we, of course, that, that we can't actually draw that many. So this is a, <laughs> this is a loose depiction. Um, and these organelles are what actually contract. So each one of these individual organelles is what's going to move together when a muscle contracts. We're going to look at that in a little more detail. It, they also have another specialized organelle called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That might remind you of the endoplasmic reticulum, which you've probably already learned about in a basic cellular physiology. Um, and it, the sarcoplasmic reticulum is just a modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And its main job is to store and release calcium. We'll talk about that a little bit more. All right, so I think we're all on the same page now in terms of nomenclature. We know that a muscle fiber is just another word for a single muscle cell, which is this modified, elongated cell that doesn't look like other cells, and that there are some specialized organelles, in particular the myofibrils and the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's talk about the big picture, how muscles contract. Okay, so in order for muscles, skeletal muscles to contract, they need to have some kind of stimulation to do so from the nervous system. So we have what's called a neuromuscular junction. So a neuron comes along and oftentimes these neurons split at the very end. So they'll, they'll kind of break apart um, a little bit so that a single neuron can innervate multiple different muscle cells. So we've just got an illustration of one right here. So when a neuron is, is um, stimulated, it will start an action potential. The action potential travels down all the way to the neuromuscular junction. And when the action potential reaches um, right down here, the axon terminal, one of the things that happens is these calcium channels open up and calcium comes flooding into the cell. And calcium stimulates the release of these little vesicles, which contain acetyl, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is actually how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, acetylcholine is stored in these vesicles, and then when calcium stimulates them, the, their release, they're going to fuse with the membrane and empty this acetylcholine into the synapse. It's going to travel across the synapse to the muscle cell where it will bind right here and open up a um, open up a channel so that sodium can come in. 
when sodium rushes in, if enough sodium comes in, so if an, enough acetylcholine diffuses across this membrane and enough channels open, when enough sodium comes in, it will stimulate an action potential in the muscle cell. So it's not just neurons that can have action potentials. These muscle fibers can also have action potentials in the same basic sense. So, uh, you know, remember that kind of domino effect that you've learned about with the action potentials in neurons? Same thing happens here. So it'll start right here and it'll kind of move through the cell. And ultimately what happens is, as a result of this action potential, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, as, it, as the action potential moves by, it releases calcium into the, um, those individual myofibrils. And the calcium stimulates the myofibrils to contract. And that leads to muscle contraction. Okay? Um, so that's the big picture. And then the calcium, once it's kind of done its magic, this, it will be uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum um, takes it back in, stores it until the next action potential comes along. Same thing happens up here with acetylcholine. It uh, tends to be recycled back into this axon and it'll wait for the next action potential. So that's the big picture. Basically, calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in response to a neuronal signal um, stimulates contraction of the muscles. Now we need to look at exactly how that calcium causes an organelle to contract, because that's really interesting. So <laughs> we have more little bunches of things for you to know about. That's the good news, or the bad news, I guess, depending on how you think about it. All right, so remember our organelles here, the myofibrils? Well, these myofibrils are filled with little, um, they're filled with little filaments. Okay, and there's two big types of filaments that you need to know about. There's thick and there's thin. Thick filaments are called myosin. I remember that because it's longer. And thin filaments are actin. And if you look at it close up right here in this picture, you can see that they're arranged in a specific pattern kind of like this. Okay, they're, they're sort of gently overlapping in some places. And what you've got here is a whole bunch of units. So they call this a sarcomere from one... Um, from one Z disc to another. And each myofibril is just made up of a bunch of sarcomeres end to end to end to end to end. So the big picture here, what's happening, is the myosin, the thick filaments, are going to more or less stay in place and they reach out, they grab the thin filaments, and they pull them towards this H zone. So these myofilaments right here, the thick myosin filaments, we're going to reach out, grab this actin, and pull it that way. So all of them are going to do that at the same time, pull it this way. Same thing is happening over here. These ones are picking up, are grabbing onto these, this actin and pulling it that way. So that's going on all throughout the muscle, this, this muscle fiber. So through in each one of these myofibrils, in the entire muscle fiber, that's happening. And all of this together causes the entire muscle fiber to shorten. Okay, so that's, that's ultimately what's happening. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Calcium allow, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but calcium basically allows this myosin filament to reach out and grab the actin and pull it towards quote unquote the middle or this H zone. And that's happening at each one of these. Okay, so that's short, overall shortening the muscle fiber. This is just a little close-up picture of how this is happening. So in this case, the green is the actin, the purple is the myosin. And you can see that the myosin has these little, um, what look kind of like head, they call them myosin heads. And the myosin heads reach out and actually grab hold of the actin fibers. The reason they don't do that all the time is because the binding sites on the actin are actually covered up. In a resting state, they're covered up, kind of protected like a trap door is shut over them. Um, these proteins called um, tropomyosin and troponin. troponin. Um, and those proteins cover up the binding sites so that these little myosin heads can't reach out and grab it. 
when calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it essentially kind of diffuses through here, the calcium changes the configuration of those of, of the um, proteins that are covering that binding site, and it moves them away. And all of a sudden, the, these myosin heads are like, yay, and they bind. And they actually bind um, repeatedly, so they'll reach out and grab and pull, oops, and they'll do it again. They'll grab and pull, grab and pull, grab and pull. And it's kind of like centipede. So some of these myosin heads will be grabbed on at any time, and other ones of them will be kind of reaching out and grabbing a, a, um, a different place. So they kind of work together to pull all of this, these actin fibers towards this middle area. And the ones over here will be doing the same thing at the same time. So essentially, that's how muscles contract. It's just a whole bunch of this over and over and over again. As the calcium gets um, moves back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, those binding sites get covered up and you go back to this resting state. It's important to note here that ATP is required both for the contraction and the relaxation. So we're not going to go into the biochemistry in this video, uh, but hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of how the muscles contract and uh, what needs to happen in order for that to take place. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.